Yeah, I mean, you're going to play a team that's going to have great athletes on it. And so I think the way you have to go about that game is the team that makes the least mistakes and probably has the best kicking game because so early in the season, uh, defense is usually ahead of the offense by two games. Uh, so to me, it's, you know, be disciplined, don't make mistakes, and have a strong kicking game. I think if you do that and you play as a team, and that's really number one, play as a team. Uh, you've got a chance to win. If not, then things can fall apart. Yeah, I tell the guys, guys, strap it on. Play Georgia, hard-nosed football. Run the ball hard. If, uh, if you're on offense, don't stop to the guys on the ground and just keep going because good things will happen. Yeah, I hate to see Easton uh, get hurt, especially when he really developed a lot. And, and, and I tell people, fans always ask about, you know, last year at Easton, I said, look, a quarterback cannot go around, below, above, around anything, you have to go through the fire of experience. And he finally had that one year of fire. He had to walk through and he did a great job. And he was coming out of it. I'm excited about this young kid who, who just came out and, and really very disciplined. Uh, didn't seem to let the limelight bother him. Uh, I, you know, I just, like any other quarterback, of course, you worry about the development because you have to go through the fire. I don't care who you are. But he's such a cerebral kid when it comes to football knowledge, the IQ. Um, I think that's helping him a lot. It's interesting because obviously it's hard to believe that two story programs like Georgia and Notre Dame have only played one time in the history of college football. And this will be the second time, of course, we're playing up there. I'm really excited about watching them come down to Georgia and play between the hedges. That's going to be exciting. But of course, you cannot, it, it can't help but conjure up memories of that game because it was such a big game, such a big season for us. And uh, it's just, it's, to me, it's exciting. A couple of guys we were sitting around and they said, hey, why don't we get the guys together for the Notre Dame game that are not going up there? And I thought, hmm, not a bad idea. So I started looking into finding a hotel in Athens we all could go to and just maybe go to the bar or maybe rent a, uh, some kind of conference room. And so one day I was talking to Coach Cavan and I said, hey, we're planning on getting the team together, the guys that are not going. And he said, uh, have you, you know, why don't you see if you can get the indoor facility? And he goes, I'll check with Kirby, see if he's okay with it. And so he ch checked with Coach Martin. He was gracious enough to support it. And so then I called Greg McGarity. And, uh, and Greg said, yeah, no problem. You know, feel free to do it. And so that's what we ended up doing. And we're going to have, uh, I did a quick survey to see who all, how many people were, would come. Because it was only going to be a handful. We'd better off just getting a, uh, going to a bar or going somewhere watching it. But it was, ended up being a quite a large number, about 45 players. And then you bring their spouses or significant other. And you're talking about close to 85, 90 people. So it's going to work out really well. Yeah, I mean, you got uh, Mike Fisher, who's our starting cornerback. You got uh, Tim Morrison, all American tackle. Um, Lord, who else? I mean, it's a bunch of the guys that are coming. I'm trying to think of them on the top of my head now that you asked me. If you want to ask me, I've told you a bunch of names. But uh, it's, quite, it's quite a few of the players that are coming. Nat Hudson, all American guard, is coming. Um, let me think on defense. Robert Miles, start defensive end, is coming. Um, we got quite a few guys coming. Hmm, how can I put it? I guess the, to me the turnovers, because every turnover we got turned into points, which were the only points we scored. That stands in my mind that defense was, was really uh, a, a big playmaker that game. Uh, I remember how exhausted we were. Uh, defense ended up playing 58 minutes out of the, I mean, I'm sorry, 58% of the minutes. The offense played 42%, so we're in the field constantly. Um, so I, I remember Really, the, the hard hitting, the, 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 the turnovers we caused, how we executed what we practiced, even the field goal was practiced. We, that's not something that we just went out there and did. We knew the guy had a low trajectory, and Coach Russell said, Here's what we're going to do. We practiced Terry jumping off my back. And in the game, we had him and I put a different strategy in, but it still worked. Um, and then I remember at the end of the game, just the field just covered with people, and you literally could not get to the locker room. And it was kind of kind of regretful. I, I didn't get a chance to, you know, shake hands with any of the Notre Dame players or anything because we took Coach Dooley in the middle of the field. Couldn't find Coach Devine, which was his last game, by the way. And Coach Dooley felt terrible that we couldn't. But you know, you you literally could not get to where you wanted to go. Well, I think you have to put it in perspective. My senior class, we gave him the only only losing season in his career in 1977. When we were freshmen. And then we turn around four years later and give him the only undefeated season in the national championship he ever got. So to me, it was really a, a, a strong, you know, sweet moment, you know, to be able to give him that. Um, but that's funny because I don't know, about 10 seconds before that picture, when we, actually about a minute before, when we threw that first pass, we threw the only pass we completed, and it actually 
kept the chains going. We had to have it. It was third down in, I believe, eight or 11. I cannot remember. And Amp Arnold caught the ball, and I looked, and Notre Dame had no timeouts left. I think it was a minute and something left on the clock. And so I turned to Coach Dooley. I said, Coach Dooley, we won. And, you know, Coach Dooley's staunch. He, that, that, he looked at me, he said a few choice words, and said, it's not over till the clock says zero, zero. And I realized that he didn't understand that they had no timeouts left. Unless we handed him the ball, we weren't going to lose the game. And I said, Coach, they have no more timeouts left. We have a first down and a minute to go. And he managed a little smile at me, and then he goes, it doesn't matter. The clock's still not zero, zero. So I said, okay, that happened about a minute before that pitch was taken. You see how happy he was there, though. This is our game helmet, and uh, obviously I wore this in the Sugar, Sugar Bowl against Notre Dame. As you can see, you got gold marks all around the helmet. That's just one of them right there. The first of the year, we had, back then we had initiation the first week of when the freshman got there. And you do a little initiation, and then you, the, senior, the seniors pick a freshman to be their mentor. Um, the mentor has to do other stuff and like bring your, take your tray from your cafeteria, you know, maybe take your clothes up to your room, whatever. But also, there's a serious side to that, and it's to be a mentor to the young men. And of course, um, I, I was given a choice and uh, as being one of the senior leaders, and um, I picked Herschel, knowing that he's a good young man. I could tell just the way he carried himself in just a short period of time that we've been with him. I could tell. He's a, a good young guy, and some of the seniors might take advantage of that kindness. Uh, and so I felt, but I better jump on this guy and, and mentor him. And of course, uh, we became lifelong friends, and uh, to this day, we're still in touch. In the Tennessee game, first game of the year, we started Donnie McMickens, and then we put Carney Norris in there, and then we put Herschel. And of course, after we saw Herschel run, that was into that show. He, the rest of the year, uh, did now in that game, Notre Dame had not allowed running back to gain 100 yards on them the whole season. Herschel dislocates his shoulder the third play of the game. Um, I mean, complete separation. They pop it back in. He plays the rest of the game and gains 150 yards against really one of the probably the, probably the best defense we played that year. Incredible guy. He can be a little goofy sometimes. He's fun. He's funny. People think of he's quiet, uh, but a lot of times, if you know, you know, real close, um, he'll he'll talk a lot more. Um, but that story I told you, uh, it was kind of different because that's something we never had experienced, but that was my freshman year, the first game at home, which was Texas A&M, if I remember correctly, I'm going off memory here. We had just beat Tennessee, and I think we came back for a second game was A&M. And, um, and back then on Saturdays, the math dorm, the parents would come visit you and just sit around your room for you know an hour, and then they'd leave, and then we'd have to start going to get taped and stuff. And uh, I remember sitting on, on the balconies talking to our parents and stuff, and all of a sudden you see Herschel just kind of be bopping through the parking lot and going up the steps. It's a huge trophy. must have been four or five feet tall. And we're thinking, like, that's kind of strange. So we, I asked him, I said, what's that for? He goes, oh, I, I just had a karate turn. I got first place. And, like, it was nothing. This is, you know, a couple hours before kickoff against A&M, which at the time was ranked. And I just thought it was hilarious, you know, this guy, you know, he just takes things once you know, in stride. Every part of this ring was designed by the three team, the three captains, the team captain was myself, uh, Jeff Hip was the defensive captain, and then Matt Hudson was officer captain, and Rex Robinson was our special teams. Um, but everything has meaning to that team, and you can see it's not a real guardy ring like you see now. We didn't want it to be that way because the, the theme that year was Big Team, Little Me. So as you see above the top, it says National Champions. 1980, you've got 12 diamonds, one for each victory in Georgia across the front. <clears throat> if you go to the side, one of the sides, you see you have your name there. Mine's Ross, obviously everybody had their, everybody had their own name on there. You got the Sugar Bowl trophy, which we won. You got the Georgia Bulldog, which obviously the mascots, you know, it's, it's nationally known and very important to us. And down here, you cannot see it anymore, but it said Georgia 17, Notre Dame 10. It's already gone. If you go to this side, you probably have to zoom in pretty quick, but what you'll see is the stadium before it was enclosed. I don't know if you can see it or not. You can even see the goalpost in there, and it has SEC champs written on the inside. On the top here, it has TEAM in big capital letters, T-E-A-M. The big Georgia G helmet, which is our pride. And then here we had 12 and 0. So you can see everything here has something meaning in the tradition of Georgia football. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's, it's like I tell you, I mean, it's, it's exciting. I think, you know, from what I understand, there's a lot of Georgia fans going up that don't have tickets. And it's probably going to be the largest uh, tailgate without tickets of Georgia people ever. Um, to me, that's exciting. Um, I hope they play as a team because that's one of the greatest honors I ever had was playing with a group of guys that played great together. Uh, we wouldn't have played great 
individually because we weren't talented enough with the exception of probably Herschel to be that good. Uh, but together, we played really, really well together, which to me is, a, to this day, that's probably the greatest takeaway from that team is the relationships and the friendships that we developed through that time. Go dogs!